correct two nothing yeah in the semifinal. And there were yes, and there were three shutouts in the championship game. Since then, Yale over Quinnipiac four nothing in 2013. Duluth over UMass uh, three to nothing in 19, and then UMass over St. Cloud five to nothing in 21. And so the national championship game, obviously Denver versus Boston College. Denver visited Boston College on October 21st at Conti Forum in Chestnut Hill. Uh, Denver took that game 4-3. to three. I have to check that, but that was one of the only games where I think BC had a lead after two periods and lost. I think they've won every game except for two. I'll have to double check that for you, though. All right, so early, early update here. It's, it, right now it's 1040. We're aiming to get the BC locker room open at 1042. When we actually do that, I'll, I'll confirm that, and then they'll be up here shortly after that. Yeah, so Boston College currently is 25-2 and two after leading after two periods. One of those two losses was against Denver on October 21st. They lost 4-3 to three at Conti Forum in Chestnut Hill. Fish wants me to let you know that the attendance was 18,598. That was a sellout. 18,598 sellout. For both sessions, yeah, both sessions. So tonight was also the first time Michigan's been shut out in the Frozen Four. Jess Myers knows the last time Michigan was shut out in the NCAA tournament. And that was in 2009, opening round game, two to nothing win in Bridgeport, the Bridgeport Regional by Air Force. I read Air Force, I just didn't say it. <laughs>
All right, so BC should be here momentarily. I'll just run through the schedule again for tomorrow. So, but first, before I do that, right now it's 1044, both locker rooms are open to the media. So at 1044, both Boston College and Michigan have opened their locker rooms to the media. So those will be open for 30 minutes. I'm looking at it, it says 1045 right now, so we'll go until 1115. Yes, yeah, I just got it. Phil wants you to know that the locker rooms are open again. Both, yes, both, yes, yes, thank you. Both locker rooms are open, says Phil. Uh, so schedule again for tomorrow. So noon at noon, BC will have their presser. Uh, that'll be the first thing on the docket. They'll practice at 1.15. Denver will follow that at 1 p.m. With their press conference, they're practicing at 11.15. And then at 1.30, we'll have a state of the game press conference with Scott Sandlin, Eric Martinson, Steve Metcalf, and Jeff Schulman, uh, where we'll cover a variety of topics about college hockey. We're also still just waiting on the names of the Michigan players that will join us, but again, the locker room is open now, so if there's anything specific you want, you can certainly head there now. I also, I know it was warm weather today. Fish is slacking. He only sent me the championship game temperatures, so I can't give you the semifinal temperatures, unfortunately. Mar Marvin might know, but Fish, Fish did not know. Who? Exactly, correct. Not here. Correct. Out of sight, out of mind. Beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful this time of year. Guys, congrats. Thank you. Is he, is he there? Yeah. Should I just, I'll just take questions for them now. Okay. Coach is coming in a second. All right, Coach, first off, congratulations on advancing to the championship game. We will start off by taking an opening statement from you yep. on tonight's game. It was an interesting game. <laughs> um, I thought we did a great job of capitalizing when we had chances, but um, Michigan did a great job of coming out of their zone with a ton of speed. So even when we were ahead a few goals, it never felt like we were in control or the game was settled. Um, credit to them on being able to transition so well. I thought with those transitions, our defense uh, did a great job handling rushes, and uh, Jacob was outstanding in net tonight. So we were able to thwart those. Um, ideally, we like to spend more time in the offensive zone, but uh, they were doing a solid job defensively, keeping us on the perimeter. Um, but when we did get small cracks and, and chances, we were able to finish those. So full credit to our forwards to capitalize on our chances. Uh, about the third period when we were ahead, we started to simplify our game, uh, play with a little safer, uh, use the walls a little more, and we were able to do a nice job there of keeping pucks out of the middle and, and spending more time uh, not scrambling in our zone. So I was really happy with um, probably the second half, maybe second, uh, probably 12, 13 minutes left in the third. We did a great job of not, of really limiting their chances to, to come back and get in the game. So, but our penalty kill did a great job. Power play looked really sharp on the first one, uh, moved the puck well. 
but after that, I think uh, their penalty kill was solid and, and did a good job of keeping us on the outside. All in all, it was a, it was a track meet, which we kind of expected. Uh, a lot of rushes going both ways, but uh, I think our rush defense was probably the best part of our game tonight, and we did a great job there. So. Thank you, Coach. So a couple of reminders. We're going to take questions for the student athletes first, and then we'll come back and take questions for Coach. Uh, there's no video recording, so t as long as we're taking still photos, that's fine. Um, just raise your hand so I can see them, uh, especially if you're standing along the side, and uh, we'll start up right up front here, and we'll try to get people in a queue. So as the kids are talking as well, please just raise your hand. Go ahead. Hi, Rachel Blount from the Minneapolis Star Tribune. Cutter, you mentioned the other day that the, the bean pot loss to BU really put a fire in this team's belly. How much fire are you all feeling now after this win, being just one step away from the big trophy? Yeah, I said it earlier in the year. Um, anytime someone commits to Boston College to win championships, and we have an opportunity for that on Saturday. Um, been super proud of our groups up to this point, um, and we owe these guys. It was a early, early matchup at uh, Conti Forum, and um, unfortunately didn't come out with the win then. And um, even since then, we uh, we haven't let that sour taste out of our mouth, and we're uh, we're going to be ready to go on Saturday. Right back, Jackson Bolin, Let's Play Hockey, Cutter, and uh, Will. How much does it help having a goalie like Jacob, who's just got a calm demeanor in, in the net, but he's, he's always been positioned, he's always ready. Uh, what does that mean to our team? Will, why don't you start with that one? Yeah, I mean, going into every game, it's, it's nice having him back there. I mean, he uh, has such a confidence in that that, um, I mean, Coach touched on it. There's um, a few too many, too many odd man rushes, so um, having him back there definitely helps. So um, I'm mean, looking at this, he had 32 saves, and um, I mean, he was just, he was, he was unreal tonight. Cutter? Yeah, he's, he's probably the calmest goal I've ever played with. Um, any opportunities that we give up, just knowing um, you know, that safety net back there that he's in, um, in between the pipes. And he's, uh, he's as competitive as all of us. And, uh, and he's a great kid as well. So um, super pumped for him and the game he had today. And um, it's been fun a lot learning, learning how to score goals on him in practice. Um, but uh, no, great kid. And uh, he had a, one heck of a game tonight. Jess up front. Jess Myers from the Rink Live. Jacob, are you one of those goalies that likes to feel the puck? And if so, how much fun was that third period where you've got some some goal support and, and, and they're firing away with 17 shots? Yeah, I mean, our D were really good tonight with kind of eliminating the grade, A's, uh, grade A chances against. So um, didn't really feel like 32 shots against. Uh, they made it pretty easy on me to kind of be able to see everything and you know kind of limit the uh, severity of the chances. Uh, Will, you're a local guy. Uh, Just to from, identify yourself. Please. Oh, yeah, sorry. I'm Jacob Lassner, WZBC Sports. Uh, Will, you're a local guy um, from Lexington, Massachusetts. What does it mean to uh, wear the BC sweater and score the game-winning goal to uh, send uh, BC to the uh, national championship? Yeah, I mean, uh, if you told me this as a kid, it would be kind of crazy. I mean, I remember the days I was watching Johnny Gaudreau and um, the same uh, Frozen Four. So it's a dream come true. And, uh, I mean, it would be unbelievable to get that trophy just like he did. Anything additional for them? Yeah. Uh, Anthony Smith, Eagles Daily. As Coach alluded to, for Cutter and Will, uh, your guys' rush defense was phenomenal tonight. Uh, how effective was that in helping you guys move pucks up ice and create chances Cut in the second and third? Yeah, it's, it's huge. Coach preached on it. Um, it's the small details, having good gaps. They have um, a really solid forward core, um, and they like to transition fast. And RD had great gaps all night, and it gave us the freedom um, to make plays off the rush. And um, they had... You know, like I said, great gaps, super confident back there, um, and just watching it all game long. They, you have the utmost confidence when um, you know three studs are coming down on them, and um, it was super fun um, to watch how great they were tonight. Will, I mean, all year we've been talking about how we want to play fast, so I think um, it's it's nice when our D are back there and um, they make a turnover and they're and they're playing it quick up to us. So um, we love playing fast and uh, just go right back on offense. Go right over to Sean. Uh, Sean Damich with USCHO. Uh, that's for any of you guys. Um, you know, four goals, it just seems like a regular thing for you guys, game in and game out. How are you guys able to make it look so easy um, with every game? Cutter? Uh, we've said it many times. Uh, we're a very, very competitive group um, with a lot of high octane on the offensive side, and um, we do our best to, you know, uh, score goals, and we love doing it all season long. Um, 
it's just the confidence we've had and we build up over the last eight, nine months in practice and competing against the best players in the country. And um, anytime you get an opportunity to, you know, have a chance on net, uh, we're always, you know, striving to get pucks to the net and create chances. And um, we're fortunate to uh, get four in tonight. Jesse? Jesse Pierce, NHL.com. Congratulations, you guys. And I apologize if this question was already asked, but for Cutter and Will, you guys have been playing on these big stages and finding success and finding ways to push, going back to the World Juniors. Just what has that been like and how much have it, you guys helped each other along in those, uh, those situations as well? Will? I mean, uh, I think we've talked about this a lot, that, I mean, these, these big opportunities, we like to have fun and enjoy the moment. So I think um, Dane, all the way back to World Juniors, um, crazy, crazy atmosphere, and then you can go all the, all the way through the year. We've had huge games. I mean, being pot hockey East, and um, now here. So I think um, we feed off the energy, and uh, I mean, we just we love playing in front of these atmospheres. Cutter. Yeah, um, everyone says we have a super young group, uh, which we do, but we have a very experienced group as well, playing in uh, high octane um, games like World Juniors, um, Hockey's Championship, and um, the Frozen Four. And, um, there's no doubt in our game in the locker room, and we've been super confident with the group we've had all season long. Um, even being the younger guys, we never really looked at that and let that affect our game. And um, you know, we stick to coach's plan and playing fast, playing competitive, and you know, always out compete the other team. And um, you know, it was a fortunate night for us to uh, pop four in, and uh, um, it's the ultimate goal on uh, Saturday night. One more for the players if it's there. All right, guys, thank you. Get it back to the locker room. Appreciate yep. it. Uh, again, just a quick reminder, it's 10.56 right now. Both locker rooms are currently open until 11.15. I will move to questions for Coach. Again, just throw your hands up so I can see them, especially if you're standing over here. We'll start with Sean. Uh, Sean David, USHO. Uh, Coach, you, mentioned, uh, you guys mentioned that um, you already saw Denver earlier this season. It's a matchup of two of the best offenses in the country. What's it going to take to stop Denver on Saturday night, tonight, Saturday night to bring home that title? Yeah, we're going to have to be very sharp. <clears throat> uh, Kind of got to watch most of their game tonight uh, while we were waiting, and you know they're still uh, able to generate offense at a very impressive rate. So uh, hopefully we won't give up as many odd man rushes as tonight, but uh, we know we're going to have to be sharp. They they create on the rush and they're great in the offensive zone. So their defense are very active. They're going down the, the wall or joining the rush all the time. So we're going to have to do really thorough job defensively when they have the puck. Ryan? Ryan Lambert from Elite Prospects. Um, what, sorry to ask about Denver again, but what has, uh, what have you learned about your team since that loss to Denver? That was a long time ago. <laughs> um, well, we've improved a lot, uh, but that was a really fun hockey game. Uh, it was back and forth. It was. Um, Two, two good teams, both making a lot of plays. Uh, I think th the biggest mistake we made in that game was we took a few penalties. I think we had maybe three in the last 10 minutes of the game. So we've learned from that. Uh, but <clears throat> other than that, I think you know both teams have stuck to that style. Both teams are creating offense. And when you play against a team that's that gifted offensively, you know you, how, you have to manage the puck. Because if you give them free chances, they'll really make you pay. So I think uh, we didn't have a ton of neutral zone turnovers tonight, but we were not as effective at, with our forecheck of keeping them in the zone. They came out of their zone great um, for them with too much speed. So we'll have to be better at that against Denver. Where's right back? This is Jack Kittinger, USCHO. Obviously, Michigan's got a really good power play. Um, they, I don't think they ever really got a chance to do much in the zone. And I know they had two chances where they you had uh, they were called for penalty like 30 seconds later. I don't know if you think that sort of those were sort of turning points for you, especially that four on four where you guys scored the two goals. Maybe just ask you about what you saw from their power play and uh, if you thought that was also a turning point. Well, it's always nice when the power plays end quickly like that, but uh, they still look dangerous. I thought we got some great blocks when they when they were able to create lanes and get shots. I thought. Uh, Hershuk, Manedian, I think, had a couple of great blocks there. So if you don't get those blocks, then all of a sudden the power play feels much more dangerous. So I thought we got a few good clears um, as well. Um, you know, they, their power play was the best in the country. So uh, one, you want to limit chances, which we were fortunate not to get too many, and, and a couple of them ended quickly. And then 
when, when they move the puck as effectively as they do, you have to get blocks uh, when they get you out of position. So we did a great job in that. One more for Coach, if it's there. Jess? Jess Myers from the Rink Live. Did you ever find uh, Matt Boldy's surprise in the locker room? Still looking. Still looking. All right. <laughs> Saw Billy, G, uh, Billy Guerin came over for dinner last, at our restaurant to say hello last night, so that was good. But I'm still wondering what's in our locker room. <laughs> at least we have two more days to find out. <laughs> All right, Coach, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Congratulations. Thanks. All right, Coach, uh, when you're in and settled, we'll start off just by taking an opening statement from you on tonight's game. Yeah, I would just say just super proud of this group. Uh, we've got some special kids in that locker room, uh, high-performing kids that are going to be uh, elite NHL players one day and, and, and elite high-performing people. And uh, that's what I'm most proud of. Uh, credit to Boston College uh, for the win tonight, and good luck to them in, in the finals. That'll be a great final. Thanks, Coach. Again, we'll take questions for the players first, so just shoot your hands up uh, so we can get you a mic, and, and we'll go from there. Jess? Jess Myers from the Rink Live. Gavin, in the third period, you're down by three, but your team certainly didn't look like there was any quit. Just tell us about that third period, you know, 17 shots, and kind of the push you made there. Yeah, I mean, um, fighting for your season. Um, we know that... Uh, any game that we're in, no matter how many goals we're down, we're never out of it. So, um, yeah, I was just talking to the locker room and give a good push here and just kind of see what happens. So, um, yeah, no, I'm extremely proud of the push that we made and unfortunately it didn't go our way. But, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a hell of a third period. Yeah, right in the middle there. Uh, Zach Shaw, 24 7 Sports. In terms of shot attempts, possession, it seems like you guys did a lot of the things you wanted to do tonight. Can you speak to that and maybe the frustration that it didn't show up in goals? Rick, why don't you start with that one? Yeah. Um, I don't know. We had a game plan going in. We knew uh, Fowler was a great goalie. Um, and kudos to him. He had a great game. Um, but I don't think we took away his eyes enough. I mean, with a high-end goalie like that, you have to get to the net, make his life hard. Um, yeah, I just don't feel like we made it hard enough tonight. Gavin, same question. Yeah, I mean, uh, just like Rhett said, he's he's a hell of a goalie, and um, yeah, you got to get in front of him, and especially games like this. So, um, yeah, I mean, hell of a third period, but we could use that all night. So, anything further for the players? Yeah, back to Jess. Jess Myers from the Rink Live. For either of you, BC scores right away. Is it almost? okay that it was that early and it seemed like your your team really dominated long stretches of the first period after that it didn't seem like there was any real sag or anything just what what did you think of the first period um yeah it's been our team all year man i mean we've battled day in day out there wasn't a doubt in our mind i mean even going into the third period like down three i mean there wasn't a doubt in our mind we've been doing it all year this team went through so much adversity uh, yeah, I mean, there was no fight in this team, or there was no quit in this team. I mean, yeah, I felt like, yeah, we we just gonna buy one tonight. Any other questions for the players? All right, guys, thank you. You can head back to the locker room. Appreciate it.
Questions for Coach. Again, just throw your hand up, especially if you're kind of sitting in a weird spot and I can't see you. Yeah, we're in the middle. Brandon, what stands out to you? To just have, identify yourself, please. Oh, sorry. Sam Stockton, Gulu Gulu Hockey. Um, Brandon, what stands out to you about this team in particular, having been a part of three of these Frozen Four runs in a row? What will you remember most about this group in particular? I feel like every year there's been adversity, uh, a different type of adversity this year with the injuries and then uh, having to fight for it. I felt like we were in the playoffs since uh, the Christmas break. And uh, I'm super proud of the guys for the run that that they went on and what we put together. Um, I think, and trust me, these are these are not excuses. This is reality of what's going on. But uh, throughout a coaching change, throughout you know Luke Hughes and Sam Miskevich and Fantilli signing late and losing Eric Portillo and and then uh, Ethan Edwards misses the first half of the season and Jackson Hallam's out in November. Um, all these guys stepped up, and and it's really cool to see. And that's what made them closer. And everyone feels involved. Um, so it's tough that this group is so tight and all the cliche lines of the closest teams are, are the ones that are gonna be successful in the end. Um, you know, they probably deserve more, but the, we lost to a really good Boston College team. I, I feel like we, we were good, we weren't great. Um, what we did in the third is probably more of what we are. They have four elite, elite, elite players and their top guys scored four goals, and, and it's the first time all year we've been shut out. So there's no secret into how they won the game. I talked about it in my press conference before, and I'm just being myself and talking. Like, those guys broke the game open. Well, they have 20 shots. And if you look at the high dangers, it's 6-9, six, 6-6, nine, six, six, nine, nine, 34, 19. These guys are studs. Studs and all credit to their team, and it's not taking away credit from anybody else. Those guys are special, and they they won they won that game. They broke it open, and I agree with Rod. I think we could have got to the net more on a really good goaltender. He, he's another one. He'd be the fifth. Ryan Zuka, MLive.com. Brandon, you talked a lot this year about how close this team is, and uh, there is some guys that need to make decisions. How closely do you think this team will be? How similar do you think this team will look next year? Well. I, We'll, I don't want to talk out of turn. We'll deal with that when the time comes. But Just. We're planning on a lot of guys coming back. I'm sure as hard as this is right now that they'll have something to prove. But who knows? Jess Myers from the Rink Live. Brandon, your power play have been your bread and butter all season. Um, how frustrating is it when you have those abbreviated, you know, 20-second, 30-second power plays and all of a sudden you're back to four on four? Yeah, it's... Uh, Again, it's, it's not an excuse or a disclaimer, but I think that the turning point in that game is one of their players trips over Dylan Duke's skate, and now we go to four on four, and they scored two quick goals after that, and now it's three nothing. Um, we really had two power plays, and, and we had extended possession both times, and their guy made a ton of big time saves. Right up back. It's Jack Hittinger, uh, USCHO. I just following up with that, obviously, four on four. Uh, having them with all that open ice, that's got to be a pretty like, dangerous moment for you guys. Um, I mean, maybe just in general, ask you about your special teams. I thought your penalty kill was pretty good. Um, it's just that power play. It seems like you never really got going. Yeah, I, th I think we got it going. It just didn't go in the net. Um, when you create high danger chances, that's getting it going. When you're in their zone the whole time, that's getting it going. You know, they were, or we were three for three on the PK, but two of their power plays were. Uh, 20, 30 seconds as well, so. Back up to Jess. Jess from the Rink Lab again. You lose the game and their guy gets a shutout, but your guy might get on ESPN, your, your goalie, with a couple of those saves he made. Just, you know, how, how good was he tonight in a, in a losing effort? Yeah, no, he's, he's been great all year. Um, and just, again, the type of person that he is. And I've never seen a group of players go to bat for an individual and want him to do well as much as Jake Parcheski, which is, uh, says a lot about his character and what he's all about. We need more uh, people like that. Let's do one more for Coach if it's there. All right, Coach, thank you. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, guys.